let us kneel down before you in your presence Lord worship help me say Tommy, Brother Tommy, thank you, Brother 
time. Welcome, Sister Christina Love. We are so happy to have you. We're to today, Sister Christina. And to our own Pastor Julius. Yeah. Yeah. Is welcome. You know he is always welcome at home. Yeah. We thank God for all of you being here this morning. We want you to know that we thank God for you and we praise God for your presence in our service today. I have a couple of announcements from Pastor Dom. And they are as follows. We will not, not, not have Bible study this Tuesday due to the Memorial Day weekend, but we will resume on the following Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. So no Bible study this week. We will have Bible study next Tuesday at 7 p.m. On next Sunday, which is the first Sunday of June, we will be fellowshipping with the Olivet Baptist Church during 11 a.m morning worship as they celebrate returning into their building. So on next Sunday morning at 11 a.m. we will fellowship with the Olivet Baptist Church, which is just across the intersection on Revere. Amen. The second Sunday of June will be our graduation Sunday as we celebrate and thank God for this year's graduates. And as I see a graduate that just walked in, she graduated yesterday, I believe. Take her heart. Thank you for cathedral preparatory. <laughs> and we are so happy to have the sister, I almost called her Marissa. <laughs> sister Brooklyn, I almost called her Marissa. Marissa is her mommy. Uh, sister Brooklyn there in our presence today. We thank God for you. We are so happy and so proud of you. And I know you made all of your family proud as you walked yesterday. And you talked that castle. And I was telling your grandma, the castle was worth the hassle. And so we are so happy to have you in our worship service today. Congratulations to you. And we wish you well on your journey through college. Amen. And we also, since uh, you guys are all here, we want to acknowledge all of our doctors who are present this morning in worship service. We have so many doctors here today. We have our own Dr. Davis right here. Uh, oh, sorry. Her own name was Davis. Dr. Gibson, we welcome you. To her husband right there. He's also a doctor, Dr. Gibson. Uh, Dr. Connie is somewhere back there. I understand, Dr. Connie. Connie, Dr. Connie. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tisha Baird is back there. We are so blessed this morning to have all of our doctors in service today. We thank God for his blessings. And since I'm doing the doctors, I'm going to do the judge right there. Uh, judge Mimi is our first lady. <laughs> Uh, on the third Sunday of June, we will have our Father's Day celebration service. That's on the third Sunday. And today, today is our own pastor and wife's fifth anniversary. Uh, pastor Don and Sister Mimi have been with us as first lady and pastor for the last five years, and we thank God for them. And in honor of their uh, fifth anniversary, we will have our own Pastor Julian Spencer of the Main Baptist Church in Aurora, Illinois, bringing the message this morning for us. Uh, Pastor Julian is one of our own. He grew up here in the church with us. And we thank God for him coming from Illinois this morning to be with his friend, Pastor John. Um, we would also like to recognize... Uh, I think I got all the graduates. I just want to make sure. Um, we have a prayer list that's rather long, but we want to make sure you keep in prayer uh, Brother Clarence Cummings, Brother Deontay Faison, uh, Sister uh, Pam's son, Keith Travis, Sister Cleveland, pray for Brother Gideon Love, and pray for Sister Love and the Love family. Brother Gideon will be having back surgery in the next couple of weeks and on the 7th. Of June, and we ask that you keep uh, Brother Gideon Love. Gideon is the son of Justin Love, and we ask that you keep him in your prayers as he undergoes uh, surgery on his back, and continue to pray for Sister Love, who will be traveling to St. Louis to be with him during that time. Uh, continue to pray for Brother, uh, not Brother, but Pastor Betty Hampton Senior, uh, for Sister Cook, for Sister Kiana Grant. Uh, Rashid Loveless is home from Graham University, and we are praying for him. Sister Egypt, we're praying for you. Sister Barnes is feeling a little under the weather, but keep her in your prayers. 
We ask a special, special prayer for the family of Sister, our own Sister Dolores Rollins, who passed away uh, last week. And we ask that you keep her and your family and her family in your prayers. Sister Rollins uh, was a faithful usher and a faithful member here at Emmanuel. And we ask that you continue to pray for all of our bereaved families, the Cook family, the Strickland family, the family of Brother Grant, uh, the Kirkwood family, and continue to pray for the Love family. Uh, those are your announcements. Thank you. Let us all say amen. amen. Thank you, sister, for those, those announcements, and we pray that you all those will be governed as God has in store for us. We come now to uh, do what God has asked us to do. Uh, it is our time for giving. We're going to ask you to get ready so that uh, other ushers will come and uh, we can have our offering because the Bible tells us in, in uh, Malachi chapter 3 beginning at verse 8. Let me read this to you before we all do that. It says, Will God, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithings and offerings. But you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. The Bible says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Yeah that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there be, will not be room enough to receive. Amen. The ushers are now in charge.
God for your presence here today. Amen. Now we have, uh, we come to offer prayer. Uh, we need to always remember that uh, uh, God has us. To, when we go to God in prayer for many people who need this prayer, uh, not only the people that are hurting, but those of us who are here need prayer. We all need prayer. So it's time to go to the altar and pray. We're going to ask you to come to the altar if you wish. But let us all stand that we may stand. Come. Come on, pray. To the altar.
thank God that we have a person here who can really preach the gospel. Amen. We thank God that uh, he's here. He's not one that uh, we don't know because he grew up in this church. I see that as I look out there, some others of you grew up in this church as well. But now we are happy to have him here from uh, Illinois. And Grace Baptist Church in Illinois. He will be our speaker for this day. We're going to ask you now to hear him as he comes. Pastor Julian Spencer. Wonderful, he's been here. He's done some great and mighty things in our lives. 
always um, an overwhelming experience uh, to come back home, amen, and to amen. see everybody and to spend time uh, with you all again. I wish you all know how I felt. I could put it into words. It is a great blessing to always have an opportunity to come home. Some people yeah. don't have a home to come to. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I thank God for this home. I thank God for his, his grace and his my university. I, I listen, this is my home church, and I, 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 I watch y'all sometimes, and I, I, I get a little, I feel some kind of way. Y'all had Darnell, and I'm sorry, Pastor Darnell. And I, and I understand, I, I get it. I mean, they had Joffrey, I'm sorry, Reverend Joffrey Saunders. Amen. These are the young men I grew up with, just seeing them do what they do now and do it in the spirit of excellence. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Just to see. Uh, they connected with Dominic, amen. Uh, I just yeah. really, really praise God for that. And thank you for accepting these brothers, amen. Darnell was, Darnell sung tenor in my choir. <laughs> now he walked around big, bad preacher. You know? so I taught Joffrey how to be a director, amen. Oh, wow. Anyway, God is good. I just so grateful God and for them. And, and how about your pastor? How about your yeah. pastor? It is a very noble and, and virtuous thing what you're doing. Uh, and I appreciate you and you have all of my support at any time. Not just before Sunday in May. But anytime you need me and you know I'm here. Amen. Uh, uh, and all of you for that matter, because you all have meant so much to me down through the years. And I will never forget it and I will never not respond when you call. Because you've been just that good to me, and we're grateful. Amen. Amen. How about Reverend Hampton? Amen. 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 I said, there he is. There he is. There he is. And one of these days, Sister Cook, I want to play like you. Oh. I want to play like you. Hear how you can hear how you rubbed off on me. Amen. We just thank God for it. And I can just go all day. We'll see you with some Tista. Amen. Amen. We'll see you all. Amen. God's so good. Amen. Let me stop before I miss somebody and get in trouble. But we praise and thank God. Let's, let's go to the word of God. Psalm 46. Psalm 46 has claimed my attention. And I've tried to let go and I just can't. Amen. I just want to discuss this text with you all this morning. Psalm 46. Amen. Now by this time I will, I will have been on my second sermon for the day. Uh, so I don't have, amen, I don't have tiredness, amen, in my body. I'm feeling pretty good, amen. Amen, So I'm going to try to, try to you know, tame this thing, but I just love God, amen. 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 He's great. Psalm 46, we're going to start at verse number 1. Uh, I'm going to read verse 11 verses as quickly as possible. Reading from the New King James Version. You'll find these words. God is our refuge and strength. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. Very present help in time of trouble. Yeah. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, mm -hmm. though its waters roar and be troubled, the mountains shake with its swelling, say loud. There's a river whose streams make shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Mm -hmm. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. Just at the break of dawn, the nations rage, the kingdoms move, the utter is voiced, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, he cuts the spear in two, he burns the chariot in the fire. Here it is, verse number 10. Yeah, yeah. Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My last pastor, the last boss for... I moved to Aurora, Illinois. He was a very well-known fella. 
uh, by the name of Reverend Dr. M.T. Thompson, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Berkeley, Mount Zion, Michigan, Baptist Church. I had the privilege of being his assistant and his uh, armor bearer and his bodyguard in a real, real way before I became a pastor myself. From Hampton, I learned so much from him. One of the things that I remember most uh, was his unique greetings. If you ever greeted him, he always gave a very unique greeting back. He said a whole bunch of things, but his most famous greeting, whenever people would greet him, they'd say, hey, Reverend, how are you doing? And he would reply, the Lord is, and I'm grateful. That's all he would say. Then he would go into a little praise the only way he knew how. The Lord is. Grateful. I was 20 years younger then, and I didn't really quite understand what the little praise was for after the saying. I understand God, right? He's truly worthy of all of our praise. I understand grateful, because every day is a day of thanksgiving. But when he would say the saying, I'm thinking, but the Lord is what? That means so I can praise him along with you. The Lord is where? Where is he? So I can point him out to you so I can praise him with you. Back then I really couldn't get with it, Erica, because I couldn't put my finger on the who, what, and where, amen, the Lord was specifically. Then I moved across the country. Then I became a pastor. Then I experienced all the mountains and valleys of the pastorate. This thing is not easy, y'all. Then I experienced the ups and downs of life, which y'all didn't tell me about. <laughs> Many times, amen, there were more downs than ups. Then it became clear to me in the fog of my life, in the, in, in, in the obscurity of my life, love, and labor, that through every win and every loss, through every struggle and every point of success, through every fault, and failure, all I can say, like Reverend Dr. M.T. Thompson would say, is the Lord is. God has been there. He is there. God has been working and is working. God has been doing much more than I can even count all of the things that he has done. I can't count the ways he has made. I cannot really tell you all of the places he's been my life and all the functions that he has worked in my life. So I'm like Dr. Empty Thompson at a place in my life the Lord is. I, I, I want to preach to my brother. I want to preach to my family today as we celebrate five years of pastorate and importantly the evolution of your life. And I want to say that the Lord has been here. God is here. God will be whatever he needs to be in your life and mine for your good and his glory. And that's the best it's going to get, so he's going to praise God. Ain't going to no better than that. That is the entire point of this song. The song, Sons of Korah, was aimed at comforting God's people by raising their consciousness of an omnipresent God. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But the text says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the eight nations in an attempt to keep God's people from losing their God consciousness because of the many calamities in their lives that negatively affect them. The psalmist wrote this song to encourage, comfort, and console the people of God. Many things have happened and continue to happen in our lives that challenge us spiritually, challenge us mentally and emotionally, challenge us physically, amen, and these things are distracting us, they are depressing us, and they are flat out trying to destroy us. I'm afraid that many of us have slipped into a spiritual coma, having lost our sense of the presence, power, and purpose of God in our lives. We want to know where God is. We want to know who God is in our lives. We want to know what God is doing, and as a result, we have a hard time praying. And you ain't going to tell the truth. We have a hard time praising God. We have a hard time, amen, simply just putting one foot in front of the other just to walk out this Christian life. But I want to tell somebody, amen, what God said to Israel, be still. Uh -huh. Be still and know that I am God. For his amazing grace has brought us this far. I believe 
the same grace will bring us all the way home. Be still and know that I am God. I want to tell you that God is in hopes that you will see him in every situation that you're going through. I want to preach that God is so that you will call upon him, amen, when you need him. I want to preach that God is so that you will come to him right where you are and find right what you need, amen, because he is a very present help in the time of trouble. And you may be saying, but Pastor, I know that God is, but where is he now? I'm losing loved ones. Where is he now? I'm losing income. Where is he now? I'm losing my health. I'm losing my wealth. I'm losing my hair. Amen. Where is he now? I want to suggest to you what you already know, that God is here. God's presence makes the difference, especially when you're in trouble. Have I got a witness? Have anybody ever been in trouble? Trouble is not the time to get to know God. Trouble's the time, amen, to confidently stand on the God you already know. In fact, that's not the time to ask God, where are you? It's the time to remember what you've been taught, that God has always been there. Now we got to witness somebody. He's always been there. In creation, God was there. But the Bible says, in the beginning, God, you can stop right there. Amen. In creating you and I, the Bible says, let us make man in our own image. God was, was there in creation. God has been there in companionship. It, it was the psalmist that said, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heights, God, you are there. If I make my bed in the pits of hell, God, you are there. Amen. Somebody here talking, he's too wide to go around it. He's too high to go above him. He's too deep that you can't go under him. God is God. And he's everywhere. All at the same time. He's there in creation. He's there in crisis. Amen. Because God works in all things for his good and our glory. Is there anybody in here that can celebrate? There's been some dark times in my life. I've had some sickness in my life. But when everybody else was gone, the Lord was right there. God is. various trials because we know that by faith our pain produces perseverance our perseverance produces our perfection all because God is too many people walking around today in crisis mode my brothers and sisters unconscious to the presence of God and the power of God in their lives but I want to preach until we get it that because God is here he's my hiding place because God is here He's my happy place. If I hang in there and stay with him, he'll be my healthy place. The text says, verse 1, amen, God is my refuge and our strength. Very present help in the time of trouble. It's very accessible and it's very able. It rescues us in the time of trouble. reinforces us at all times and seasons. The text teaches us that he rescues us supernaturally. The text says he is our refuge. Time of trouble. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Yeah. Yeah. Righteous right in and they are safe. He yeah. rescues us by his presence. Yeah. So I can make that plain to you. But when the Lord is present, my enemies flee. Yeah. Uh, you would understand what I'm trying to teach you. Amen. I used to talk a good game. I, well, I, most I was smoking in high school. Y'all know I could talk that talk. I wasn't good at walking that walk, but when I was in, whenever I was in school and I was talking that talk, boy, I'd get it real, real good. But then I always knew that Kevin was somewhere around me. And all I had to do, amen, when they started to get after me, was go find Kevin. And all I had to do was stand in front of them because they wouldn't mess with me as long as Kevin was behind me. Y'all trying to understand what I'm saying? When the Lord is with you, the devil can't harm you. Because his presence makes your enemies flee. Rescues us supernaturally, but he also reinforces us naturally. Right. Listen to me. The text teaches us for even when we're not in imminent danger, the Lord reinforces us. Right. Look at verse 2 and 3. It says, even though the earth be removed, 
and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. The wars, the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Amen. The song writer uses hyperbolic language to elucidate the inspiration of God in the life of the believer. Amen. Because, that because he's present, we have confidence in extremity. But we also have confidence in everyday living. What it's saying is that when earthquakes come, move the earth. When mountains crumble into the sea, when waters roar and rush, waves and tsunamis break and destroy everything in its way, we shall not fear. Because we have a shelter in the time of storm. He is our hiding place. The message Bible says it like this. We stand fearless at Cliff Edge. Courageous in a sea storm and earthquake. Before the rush and war of oceans, the tremors that shift the mountains. God is not just the God of dire straits. But he's a God of every day. He's our refuge. He rescues us. But he reinforces us. How does he do that? Because of his unchangeableness. Uh, he said, I am the Lord. I do not change. And the reason why you're not consumed is because I ain't changed my mind about you. He's our refuge and he's always available. We used to, we used to, we used to play hide and seek around the house. And, and I had, whenever the stakes were high, we were getting down to the end, amen, the game was on the line, I would find my favorite hiding spot. My favorite hiding spot, there was a little, I don't know what it was, a little little area at the top of the closet. And I would crawl up into the top of the closet and get in that little area, and it was my favorite hiding place. The reason why it was my favorite hiding place is because I knew where it was and nobody else did. <laughs> Was my favorite hiding place is because I could always get there and nobody would be there because I was the only one that knew where it was. It was a handy place for me, but it was a hidden place from everybody else. The spot never changed. What am I trying to say? Is that what makes God a great refuge for us is in fact that He never changes. We always know where He is, He's just one prayer away. And when we go to Him and Prayer, the devil can't harm us when we're in the midst of prayer. So he can't get to us. The devil can't harm us. His demons, amen, can't distract us. Why? Because he is my refuge. Earthly refuges come and go. That little money mess comes and goes. Friends, and amen, come and go. Amen. But one thing is for sure, God will always be our refuge. He'll always be, amen, a present. Not only is he my hiding place, but he's my happy place. Yeah. The text says there's a rain river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. Uh -huh. you read this text and study it in contrast to extreme situations naturally and spiritually. The writer now speaks about God's presence that makes our peace and tranquility perfect. Uh -huh. All right. God's presence here is pictured as a river. That makes happy glad the city of God. The city of God refers to Jerusalem. And for Israel, Jerusalem was the place of their temple. Where the presence of God was visible and viable in their lives. It was their happy place. For believers in Jesus Christ, our happy place is the temple of God. But it's not a geographical place. But it's a place in our hearts. For the Bible teaches us that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. His presence ought to be visible and viable in our lives. And if he is, he ought to be your happy place. He is a river of life for us. Revelation 22 says this river brings life, healing for the nations. Cancel curses and one day no more death, sorrow, and tears. This is our happy place. Our place in the Lord. Why? Because it's the place again of the presence of the Lord. Verse 5 says, God is in the midst of her. So she shall not be moved. You can hear the way I say it. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Why in the world a man cannot be fine? Amen. Happiness in the presence of God. Why? Because this place is a permanent place. She shall.
shall not be moved. I'm happy because nothing will ever knock me off of my square. It may threaten me, but it will not defeat me. Because God is in the midst. And as long as God is in the midst, no devil in hell, amen, can stop that return to you around. You will overcome everything that the devil has thrown at you. And everything you will conquer by the power of God. It is a permanent place. It's a powerful place. I'm still in the Bible. When the nations reigns and kingdoms move against God, God will speak to them on my behalf. And the Bible says he will utterly melt them. Here's my question. Have, I know we talk to God about our problems. I know we tell God all about our problems. We tell God all about the people, amen, that are mean to us. We talk about to God about all of our enemies. But the Bible says that not only will you talk to God, amen, about your enemies, but God will talk to your enemies about you. My God. When God begins to talk to your enemies about you, he'll say stuff like, leave him alone. He's with me. Leave her alone. She's been praying to me. Leave them alone. They've been trying to walk to walk. It's one thing for me to tell him about my problems, but it's another thing for God to tell my problems about me. You better leave my son alone. You better leave my daughter alone because she's with me. Her faith is with me. Her trust is in me. He'll show up just at the break of dawn. You may cry all night. You may struggle all day. But the Bible declares that just at the break of dawn, God will deliver, heal, and set you free. You can just learn how to wait until the morning. Everything will be all right. Wait until the morning. For the Bible says weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. When the Lord speaks in power on your behalf. He moves your enemies out of the way. It becomes a happy place for you and I. This place is a powerful place. This place is a permanent place. But my brothers and sisters, this place is a personal place. I'm still in the Bible. The Bible says in verse number 7, everybody is not going to be happy about your choice to praise God. But it's personal, y'all. You've got to choose to be confident and choose to be happy and choose, amen, to be where God wants you to be. Amen. On your own accord. I can't be happy for you, but you got to be happy on your own accord. For the Bible says that the gate to testify that the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. You don't know how to shout about that yet because you don't know what he's really trying to say. He said we're going to shout and find happiness in this place because the Lord of hosts and the God of Jacob is with us. Who is the Lord of hosts? His name is Jehovah Sapa. Jehovah Sapa is the Lord who fights for us. You may not understand who Sapa is, but you know a little boy named David. David had to fight a giant Philistine. It was David that told the giant Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The Lord who fights for us. This day the Lord will deliver you. In my hand I will strike you and take your head from you. For the battle is the Lord's and he'll give you into our hands. That's enough to make somebody happy in this room. That the Lord that we're talking about is the Lord that fights for us. That's why in his presence is a happy place. He's the Lord of hosts, but also he's the God of Jacob. You may not understand what the God of Jacob means until you remember it was Amen Jacob, Amen, that wrestled with God all night long. Is there anybody here that's had to wrestle with God all night long? Can I tell you when I wrestle with God, He changed my name. When I wrestled with God, He gave me a limp, but that's all right. He confirmed His favor and His blessing all over me. When the 
Lord, your minds me that I'm blessed and highly favored. When the Lord reminds me that I'm the head and not the tail. When the Lord reminds me that I'm the lick and not the tall. When the Lord reminds me that I'm on my way up and not on my way down. That becomes a happy place. But I can't shout for you because it's personal. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for it's a personal phrase because you don't know what I know what he's done for me. You don't know the mountains he brought me over. You don't know the valleys that he brought me through. And when the Lord will keep good to you and you really get happy. The Bible says that you start telling folk about the goodness of Jesus. They said, come and behold the works of the Lord. Is there anybody here that can testify of how good the Lord has been? He's my happy place. He's my hiding place. But finally, y'all, he's my healthy place. When you get to a place where you understand that God is all I need and God is all I want, then you find it as a healthy place. For the Bible said, be still and know that I am God. Be still, quiet your mind, and know that I am God. Be still, quiet your heart, and know that I am God. I know the storm's raging, but I'm still God. I know your heart been broken, but I'm still God. I know it's hard to go from day to day, but I'm still God. And if God is God, and if God is on the throne, then we really don't to me. I 
be the friend that sit closer than a brother. Jesus was exalted. That's why my confidence is in him. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. Jesus was lifted up, but he was lifted up on the cross. But you and I, he died. Jesus died on a Friday the captain taught us that he stayed there in the grave all night Friday all day Saturday all night Saturday night but early Sunday morning Jesus my rock Jesus my savior Jesus my happy place Jesus God wants me to be, forget my past, the person. Amen. God wants me to be 
because I'm learning how to be still. And to be honest, we are in church. I can say it the way I want to say it. But it's hard to just shut up, stand there. It is what it is. And be still. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? It's hard. But what I'm learning is the less I do, the more he does. The less I talk, the more he fights. That's what I'm learning, and I want to share that learning with you. Be still and know that God is. Know it. Jesus said, John 8, 31, 32, if you truly want to be my disciple, you will know the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth shall make you free. Amen. See, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that belief in him mm -hmm. and faith in the gospel story mm -hmm. is the only thing you need mm -hmm. to receive eternal life. Mm -hmm. Be still. Mm -hmm. Don't try to figure out how good you are, how good enough I can be a good Christian. Mm -hmm. If I don't do this, I can be a good Christian. No, be still. And know what he said. That's the only thing. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes on him will be still. Nobody care where you where, where you grew up at. It's about Jesus. Remember what you know you got in your pocket? It's about Jesus. See, once you know him, knowing him changes everything. If you don't know him today, I want you to get to know him. Yeah. Because he will calm the graves that's inside you yeah. like nobody's business. Yeah. And if you know him today, be still. Yeah. And trust that knowledge. Yeah. Trust what y'all taught me. Yeah. Because it's working for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's worked for me. Yeah. I, I listen, as my mom used to say, you can't make me doubt yeah. I know too much about him. Yeah. And he's just that good. Yeah. I want to encourage y'all one more time yeah, yeah. just to be still. Trust yeah. God. He's working. And know that he's in control. Yeah. I love you and may God bless you. All right. yeah. As the preacher said on today, we ought to put our trust and faith yes. in God. Yes. He is there with you. All you gotta do is know and understand that if you just call on his name, he will be there for you. As we stand, we'll give someone an opportunity to come to the Lord on today. You may be going through, you may be kicking against the rocks. The preacher said all you gotta do is call on the Lord and he will come to your aid. But you must invite him into your heart. You must invite him into your life. Doesn't matter how long you've been in church. Doesn't matter how long Mama and Papa have been praying for you. You gotta come for yourself. Make it known. Make it a priority. Guarantee for yourself that the Lord is with you. All you got to do is believe that he came, that he died just for you. Or he was raised from the dead just for you. And that he lives today just for you. Is there one that will come to the Lord today?
Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. All you can do is give God a hand of praise. We thank God for his preaching. God that has preached the word on to us all today. We know that uh, God is still working miracles in our lives. And he is still letting us know, tapping us on the floor. Let us know that he's there with us and he is fighting for us. Amen. Amen. I thank God for today. I thank God for um, my brother who has come all the way from Illinois. Uh, you know, we grew up together in this church. And he probably doesn't know it, but I've been looking up to him. Long as I can remember, and, uh, he started off being taller than me. But he, uh, I, had get, I had to get him at least once every day. <laughs> I'm looking down on him, but I'm still looking up. I appreciate who he is as a man, and I appreciate who he is as a friend and a brother. And I thank him. Uh, from the bottom of my heart. I thank Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, you've been, and I, I tell you all the time, there's no other church I would rather pastor. Amen. This is a church of love. This is a church uh, that grows and lives by the word of God. Amen. And there's many things that I do. I know I'm, I'm, I'm non-traditional. And I do things my own way at times. And certain things I do that other pastors will not get away with. Uh, but I thank y'all for your patience. I thank y'all for your love and your understanding. And always around, being around about me and holding me up. Uh, so I can do what God has called for me to do. Amen. Amen. I thank my wife. Today, she knows exactly when I'm missing her name because she sneaks out there. She is. Amen. She is, she is understanding. She knows that there are times that you know she has to share me with you all, and she has to share me with the calling. And I know she wants me to be up underneath her all the time. <laughs> But she has understanding that I have to do other things for the Lord. And I appreciate her for that. And, 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 and. I could go down the list of many people here in this church uh, that makes ministry worthwhile and makes it easy. It makes it easy. Uh, you know, I'm still, you know, in mourning. Um, uh, deep in love and, and what he's meant to us, and what he's meant to me. Uh, but God is great. God is good. And he reminds me every day that you just have to be still and know that he is God. Amen. We have some, I thank Eric each and one of you for being here on today. I see some great faces here. Uh, Marissa and the Lee family, visitors, Jameer, amen, amen. My mother-in-law is here on this morning, amen, amen. All of you, I just know just by looking at you, God is still a miracle working business. We do have some refreshments for you in the back, but we have some dinner for you in the back, to be honest with you. Uh, so please don't leave. Come back and fellowship with us in the back so we can have a good old time in the Lord. So that we can get out of here by 2 o'clock. Amen. 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 I'm going to move out the way. Uh, we're going to ask Pastor Spencer if he come back, say a few remarks. And then he'll give us the benediction. Once again, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. We thank God. I just a couple things.
things, he always tries to get me and I try to not bother with him. Because <laughs> I'm older than him, so I feel so that he don't remember. All we gotta do is just go to YouTube and look at look at her YouTube channel and then you see the gospel jewels. <laughs> So he stood next to me in the choir. He was like this. And I used to always push him. Come on, say And he, I, it's just amazing because we all grew up with him. He wouldn't say nothing, never, nobody, for no reason ever. And his dad would have to threaten him to do anything. He would have to get up and, and do what he needed to do. And now he passed the whole church. <laughs>
be with you. Jesus' name we pray. All of God's people said together.